It's been a little while since I recorded a video about citrulline and its positive effects on erectile dysfunction and I've recently been digging around for more scientific research to expand on the points I made in the last video to find ways of making L-citrulline supplementation even more effective for this particular purpose. During this research I found a study that was performed on individuals suffering from ED and it combined both L-citrulline and resveratrol supplementation. The study was titled Oral L-citrulline and Transresveratrol Supplementation Improves Erectile Function in Men with Phosphodiesterase 5 Inhibitors, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover pilot study. So, as the study title suggests, not only were the study participants st suffering from ED, these participants had actually shown little positive response or alleviated symptoms when taking pharmaceutical solutions known as phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. One popular brand name for such pharmaceutical solutions is Viagra. So these participants are suffering from very severe, seemingly untreatable ED. This is the extreme end of the spectrum. Meaning, if results are seen from citrulline and resveratrol supplementation in these participants, this really would be some phenomenally convincing evidence that these substances do work for the purposes of treating symptoms of ED. So let's look at the outcome of the study. In this randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover pilot study, men with ED and a sexual health inventory for men, SHIM score below 16, despite on-demand use of PDE5I, received a placebo for one month or the active treatment. The active treatment was L-citrulline at 800 milligrams per day, and transresveratrol at 300 milligrams per day for another month. Patients continued on-demand use of PDE5I throughout the treatment. Results were measured against SHIM scores, erection hardness scores, or EHS, and aging male symptoms scale sexual domain, AMSSD. 20 patients between the ages of 29 and 78 years old were enrolled, and after six men withdrew, 13 concluded the study without adverse effects. Mean SHIM score for the active treatment increased significantly compared with baseline and placebo. Mean EHS score for the active treatment also increased from baseline but not significantly. Mean AMS SD score was not significantly different in either group. One significant detail regarding the improvement of the SHIM score was that the men taking L-citrulline and resveratrol revealed that the frequency of sexual intercourse was significantly increased compared with baseline. It's therefore possible that the frequency of sexual intercourse was increased with L-citrulline and transresveratrol owing to an improvement in confidence. This was confirmed when looking more closely at the SHIM scores and the improvement was seen mostly in the area of confidence with lesser effects seen in physiological changes. Citrulline was used in this study as opposed to L-arginine because oral L-citrulline supplementation increases both serum L-arginine levels more efficiently than L-arginine itself. Oral L-arginine supplementation does not increase L-arginine blood levels significantly because of the hepatic first pass effect or metabolization by intestinal bacteria. However, L-citrulline is neither affected by the hepatic first pass effect nor do intestinal bacteria metabolize it. L-citrulline is converted to L-arginine in the kidneys, thus setting the rationale for oral L-citrulline supplementation as a donor for the L-arginine pathway of penile erection. The rationale behind resveratrol was that several studies have shown that resveratrol increases the expression of endothelial nitric acid synthase and improves endothelial function by activation of sirtuin-1, which promotes endothelium-dependent vascular relaxation. Resveratrol consumption increased plasma resveratrol concentrations and flow-mediated dilation of the brachial artery which is a biomarker of endothelial function and cardiovascular health in a dose-related manner. In animal studies, resveratrol treatment leads to SIRT1 activation, and the subsequently activated ENOS leads to enhancement of CGMP synthesis via the NO-CGMP pathway for penile erection. For greater insight on the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors that they were taking, 10 men were taking Tadalafil, Nine men took sildenafil, and seven men were taking vardenafil. Now, if you take a minute to work that out, that's 26 men, and the study only featured 20, which had me baffled for a moment. 
but the study paper then specified that six men had been withdrawn prior to the study getting underway, which means we don't have a complete picture of the split between the three different phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors in the actual study participants, but at least we've got a vague idea. So there you have it. This study proves that taking L-citrulline and resveratrol in doses of 800 milligrams and 300 milligrams per day respectively can reduce the symptoms of ED and provide support even when phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors aren't having the desired effect. I hope you found this video helpful. I know the topic of ED is a sensitive one for men and I hope this gives those that suffer from it some hope and something new to try. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe by using the button below this video and don't forget to also hit the bell symbol after you've subscribed so you can be kept up to date with our new health and wellness videos that we post. Thanks for watching.